Over a thousand years ago, when the world was still learning to build with stone, one man dreamed of touching the heavens. In the heart of ancient India, under the blazing sun of Thanjavur, the great Chola king Raja Raja Chola, I commanded a marvel unlike anything seen before. A temple so vast, so precise, and so advanced that even modern engineers stand in awe today. The Brihadiswara temple wasn't just built, it was engineered. A cosmic blend of devotion, mathematics, and mystery that defied the limits of its time. This isn't just a story of kings and gods. It's the story of how human genius carved eternity out of granite. They say some stones remember, that within their silent weight, echoes of ancient hands still linger. Whispers of those who shaped them, dreams of those who dared to lift the impossible. A thousand years ago, under the amber skies of Thanjavur, such a dream took form. And with it, a story of two souls bound by time, faith and stone. The Brahadiswara temple was not merely a structure, it was a revelation. At its heart stood a towering Vimana, soaring over 200 feet high, crowned by an 80-ton granite dome that seemed to defy gravity itself. Historians still argue how it was placed there. No cranes, no steel, no modern machines, just human hands, will, and devotion. Some say it was built using an ancient ramp stretching over five kilometers. Others whisper that it was raised by divine geometry, a code written in the language of the stars. But behind the mystery of this monument lies a quieter, forgotten story, one of two souls whose destinies were carved into its foundation. Arav was a master sculptor, a man whose hands could turn cold stone into breathing divinity. His every touch carried reverence, as if each chisel mark was a prayer. And then there was Mira, a temple dancer chosen to consecrate the sanctum when the final stone was set. They met not in words, but in silence. He carved the walls that would frame her devotion. She danced in the shadows of his creations. Their love was forbidden, sculptors were mere servants of the divine order, dancers mere vessels of ritual. Yet, in the stillness between hammer strikes and temple bells, they found each other. He would carve her reflection into the temple walls, hidden faces among the celestial figures, a secret devotion beneath the stone gods. She, in turn, danced not for the king, but for him, her movements tracing invisible circles of longing across the temple floor. When the time came to raise the final dome, the 80-ton crown of perfection, Arav led the team that dared the impossible. Day and night they toiled, dragging granite up the spiraling ramp that seemed to reach heaven itself. Many fell, many broke, but Arav pressed on, believing that the completion of this dome would seal not just his work, but his love into eternity. But fate, as it often does, chose a cruel beauty. On the day the dome was lifted into place, a storm swept across Thanjavur. The ramp cracked, men screamed, and in the chaos, Arar vanished beneath the falling stones. The dome was set, perfect, immovable, eternal, but beneath it lay the soul who made it possible. Mira never danced again. Some say she offered her final prayer beneath the great Vimana and disappeared into its shadow. Centuries passed. The Chola Empire faded. Kings turned to dust. Yet the temple stood untouched, its stones gleaming like time itself, refused to age them. Pilgrims who walk there today sometimes feel a strange stillness near the sanctum, a weight not of stone, but of memory. And some nights, when the moonlight strikes the granite just right, locals swear they hear faint music from within the walls, a rhythmic echo of hammer and ankle bells, as if two ancient souls are still there, building and dancing, fulfilling a promise beyond lifetimes. The mystery of the 80 ton dome remains unsolved. Engineers marvel, historians debate, and seekers stand in silence. But perhaps the truth is not in the stone's weight or its geometry. Perhaps it lies in the love that defied gravity itself. For what is the Brihadiswara temple, if not a message carved in eternity, that even when bodies crumble, the soul remembers how to find its way home? They say God builds through human hands, that every precise line, every perfect angle, is not born of intellect, but of remembrance. The Brahadiswara temple stands as the purest expression of that remembrance, a living equation where geometry, devotion, and destiny converge. And somewhere in its silent symmetry, two souls, Arav and Mira, continued their timeless dance across lifetimes. Long after Arav's body was lost beneath the granite dome and Mira's spirit dissolved into the echo of temple bells, something sacred lingered, an invisible thread spun between heaven and earth. 
For geometry, as the ancients believed, was not just mathematics. It was the language of the soul. The architects of the Chola Empire knew this. They didn't just build with stone, they built with rhythm. Every measure of the Brihadiswara temple follows a hidden law known as Vastu Purusha Mandala, a sacred grid that mirrors the very structure of the cosmos. The temple isn't merely aligned to the sun and stars, it breathes with them. When dawn light first touches its eastern wall, it illuminates the sanctum with mathematical precision, as if creation itself bows to geometry. And within this perfect balance, Arav's spirit endured. Though centuries passed and dynasties fell, the sacred patterns he once carved continued to vibrate, soft, inaudible frequencies that called out through time. Far away, in another age, perhaps the 19th century, when British scholars came to map and measure the temple, a young woman named Mira, with eyes too familiar for chance, arrived as an assistant to a historian. She wasn't supposed to be there. Women rarely were. But something drew her to the temple's blueprint, its silent geometry, its echo of something she couldn't name. As she traced her fingers along the ancient stone carvings, her hand stopped, right where the angle of the wall curved unnaturally, forming a pattern unseen by others. Beneath layers of dust, she discovered a faint engraving, a circle divided into perfect thirds, with two smaller symbols at its center, a sculptor's mark and a dancer's step. Myra didn't understand it, but her heart did. Her pulse quickened. It was as if something deep within her recognized the design, as if her soul had once been carved into that very wall. That night, she dreamt. She saw a man, dark eyes, hands strong and steady, chiseling the stone beneath the golden sun. She saw herself beside him, dancing barefoot across the temple floor. She woke with tears she couldn't explain. In the weeks that followed, she began studying the temple's geometry not as a historian, but as if it were a message, an unfinished story. The deeper she went, the clearer it became. Every measurement, every proportion, was part of a sacred rhythm, one that seemed to pulse in her own heartbeat. And then, as if time itself folded, she met Aaron, an engineer from a nearby project, sent to survey the temple's structural endurance. When their eyes met beneath the looming Vimana, something ancient stirred, he felt it too, an inexplicable familiarity, a pull older than history. Neither spoke of it, but both knew. Together, they spent months mapping the temple's precise angles, its geometric perfection, its alignment with the sun. Yet between calculations and silence, something else unfolded, a recognition beyond words. In the final days of their study, Mira found an inscription in ancient Tamil, weathered but clear. When geometry finds its mirror, the soul returns home. She turned to Aaron, and in that gaze, centuries melted. Arav and Mira had found each other once more, through the eternal design of divine geometry. Perhaps that was the true secret of the Brihadiswara temple, not just its precision, but its power to guide souls back to their symmetry. For in every perfect line lies a story of reunion. In every measured angle, a heartbeat that never stopped echoing through time. The Brihadiswara temple is more than stone and mortar. It is a living map of the universe. Every carving, every pillar, every shadow cast by its towering Vimana is deliberate, a reflection of cosmic order, a bridge between Earth and the infinite. And somewhere in that sacred geometry, the souls of Arav and Mira, separated by fate yet bound by eternity, continue their story, as if the cosmos itself conspires to reunite them. Long ago, the Chola architects believed that temples were microcosms, mirrors of the heavens in which human life could align with the celestial rhythm, the sanctum, housing the colossal Shiva Lingam, is not positioned randomly. It aligns with the North Star, the Sun's path during solstices, and even the phases of the Moon. Each alignment is a deliberate act, a sacred whisper that humans can glimpse eternity if only they attune themselves to the celestial pulse. Arav, the master sculptor, understood this intuitively. While others saw mere construction, he saw a symphony of planets, stars, and energies. Every stone he carved resonated with these forces. And Mira, whose dances were sacred offerings, moved not just for kings and priests, but for the cosmos itself. Together, though they could not speak their love, they choreographed devotion into a dialogue with the universe. When the final stone was set, the temple did more than touch the sky, it reached into the unseen. The Lingam, illuminated by sunlight, 
only at a certain hour of the day, seemed to glow from within, as if the heavens themselves were acknowledging the labour of these two hidden lovers. And though Arav was gone, lost beneath the weight of the final dome, and Mira had vanished from the world of the living, the temple carried their essence. Every sunbeam that traced the sanctum's floor, every shadow that stretched across its pillars, whispered their reunion across dimensions. Centuries later, in a quiet modern age, Mira wandered through the temple with a notebook in hand. She was drawn not only to the architecture, but to its hidden symbolism. The celestial alignments, the carvings of constellations, the hidden geometry connecting heaven and earth. She didn't yet know why her pulse quickened at certain points, why her breath caught when the light touched the central sanctum exactly at noon. Yet the temple remembered. It remembered Arav, it remembered Mira, and it remembered the promise that some bonds are beyond death. It was in the central courtyard, under the shadow of the Vimana, that she felt it fully, a presence, faint but unmistakable, as if the space itself hummed with recognition. And there, across the centuries, she saw him Aaron, the engineer who had arrived to document structural details, but who also seemed to be guided by the temple itself. When their eyes met beneath the intricate carvings of the celestial deities, time collapsed. It was as if the stars themselves had aligned to bring these two souls together again. Together, they began tracing the temple's hidden messages. The carvings of Shiva's Tandava mirrored the cycles of the cosmos, the placement of Nandi, the sacred bull, aligned with the rising sun. Even the smallest motifs, lotus petals, geometric circles, reflected mathematical patterns found in the heavens. Every discovery felt like a conversation with their past selves, a confirmation that the universe never forgets those who belong together. And in that communion, the mystical truth of the Brahadiswara temple became clear its hidden symbolism was not merely for devotion or art. It was a living vessel of love, a cosmic compass designed to guide souls across lifetimes. Arav and Mira had been separated by fate, yet through the sacred language of the cosmos, through light, shadow and stone, they found one another again. The temple, eternal and unyielding, had orchestrated their reunion. Proof that love, like the universe, transcends time, gravity and mortality. The story of the Brahadiswara temple is not only one of stone and devotion, it is the story of vision, of a king whose imagination stretched beyond the limits of his era. Roger Roger Chola, I was not merely a ruler, he was a dreamer, a man who understood that true power lies not in conquest, but in creation. His legacy is etched into the granite of Thanjavur, a testament to human ingenuity, divine aspiration, and the invisible threads that bind souls across time. Arav and Mira were small players in this grand vision, yet they were also essential, their destinies woven into the king's dream. Roger Roger Chola did not see temples as monuments alone, he saw them as living expressions of eternity. To him, a temple was a bridge between mortal ambition and cosmic order, a place where the devotion of ordinary people could resonate with the rhythm of the universe. It was in this sacred context that Arav's chisels and Mira's dances became more than acts of skill. They became acts of destiny. The temple's towering vimana, its impossible 80 ton dome, and its secret geometry were all products of Roger Roger Chola's foresight. But perhaps his greatest gift was unseen. He created a space where human souls could transcend time. Arav, buried beneath the final stone, and Mira, wandering through grief and devotion, were held in stasis by the king's vision. Their separation, painful and absolute, was also temporary, contained within a divine framework that would eventually allow their reunion across centuries. For generations, the temple stood as a marvel that seemed almost otherworldly. Its walls, carvings, and alignments whispered the genius of a civilization far ahead of its time. And while kings and armies faded into history, Raja Raja Chola's dream endured, not merely as architecture, but as a vessel for memory, love, and spiritual awakening. In a later age, when Mira and Aaron entered the temple, they could feel this invisible presence, a pulse that was neither human nor divine, but both. As they walked through the colonnades, they realized that the king's vision had been more than a structural feat. It was a message, encoded in stone, that life, love and destiny are inseparable from the creative act itself. Every carving, every precise angle, every shadow cast at dawn and dusk was designed not only to awe, 
but to preserve the continuity of souls. It was here, in the quiet sanctum, that Mira understood the depth of the connection that had drawn her to this place. As Aaron stood beside her, tracing the inscriptions of Chola architects, she felt centuries collapse. The same energy that had guided Arav's chisel and Mira's footwork now coursed through her veins. Raja Raja Chola's legacy was not simply stone and devotion, it was the orchestration of fate itself, ensuring that two ancient souls could find each other again, even across lifetimes. And in that moment, the temple seemed to breathe with recognition. The Vimana, towering above them, seemed less like a monument and more like a living being, a guardian of memory and reunion. Mira and Aaron, like Arav and Mira before them, had become part of the king's vision, a continuation of a story that transcended mortality, politics, and time. Perhaps this is the true genius of Roger Roger Chola. He did not build merely for himself, nor for posterity. He built for eternity. He created a vessel in which human ambition, divine alignment, and the continuity of souls could coexist. The Brihadiswara temple remains, therefore, not only as an engineering marvel or a spiritual beacon, but as proof that vision, love, and devotion are forces capable of bending the constraints of time itself. Arav and Mira, separated by the cruelty of fate, reunited because a king dared to dream, a dream that became more than stone, more than art, more than history. It became the heartbeat of eternity, a sacred mirror reflecting the truth that some connections are eternal, some love is infinite, and some legacies never fade.